Hi, everybody. Recruiting Animal here on November 9th. 2022. And I want to start off, I'll introduce the people who are here in a few minutes. I want to start off with a complaint I've had before. You know, I run a group on Facebook for recruiters. Gavin uh, is a regular, uh, I was going to compliment Gavin today because he's posted some really good uh, comments on it. It's called Recruiters Online. There's tons of members and they discuss all kinds of things about recruiting. Okay. But there's inveterate people who keep criticizing me all the time. And here's their latest, their latest thing. I like going on Twitter and seeing what actual candidates, people who are job hunters say about recruiters. And I post them on in the group. And there's people say, oh, this is too I don't like this. It makes me feel bad. I'm not joking. I can quote those things, okay? Again and again and again, they're complaining about it. And you know what? I think it's good to know what people think is wrong with your business. So number one, you don't do it yourself. Then you go to your clients and say, look, I know that these are the pitfalls in recruiting. These are the things people don't like about recruiting, and I'm not gonna do them. You can trust me because I know, okay? If you don't go out to the grassroots and survey them, how are you supposed to know, okay? And what's the third thing I said is good? Yeah, they're funny. Okay, because those people on Twitter say all kinds of things that you wouldn't normally hear. I can't even repeat what they say on this show because we're a little too family oriented. At least we used to be. There used to be lots of kids who watch the show with their parents right? when we were in audio. Okay, but anyway, and then Jerry used to censor me all the time. So we don't usually swear here, but they do on Twitter. And it's real funny, okay? And, and here's the final point about that. There's a million groups for recruiters. You don't like what I do, go somewhere else, okay? Is that fair, Gavin, what I just said? Absolutely. You can disagree on this show, everybody. You can disagree, but Gavin agrees with me, okay? What about David M. Marr, who's disembodied? What about you? I think you should post your mind and speak the truth. And it's good to know what uh, people are saying about speak the truth to power. I agree. Okay. Now those recruiters are nobody. <laughs> They're nobodies, but I'm telling, I'm delivering. I'm not speaking. I'm delivering the message from the people who have to deal with guys like us. Okay. Everything about recruitment.com. Raise your hand. Gavin Johnston. He is a recruiter, but he's also a recruiting trainer. And he has lately, people ask questions uh, on uh, the Facebook groups, on my group, on other groups. And I've, he's taken some real time to give detailed answers lately. Maybe we'll get to some of them on the show. I was very impressed, okay? I, I said, geez, he's taken a lot. Now, maybe it was just, you know, a self-serving boy. If I, if I give a, somebody a good answer here, somebody's going to see it and they're going to, want to use me as a coach but he doesn't say hey i'm a coach and this is my fantastic answer come to me he doesn't he just gives the answer but i know he's a coach and uh i was very impressed okay that he would take the time and, and give reasonable advice okay and david m marr he's a corporate recruiter okay so there you go he likes to be disembodied he's in chicago what else can i tell you well now he's going to show us himself for a second like a ghost that appears okay hey, what's there. that blue background i gotta tell you that's a very ugly background okay yeah and Thank you know what you. i know something about social media and look who's here Yo, folks. this guy up, he, this guy usually makes noise as soon as i before i can say and introduce the show he's usually there making noise but he came late today okay yeah, mario the recruiter.com okay nice Good to see you. nice to see you you're, hey, you're man. Uh, and Ernie, hey, Ernie. Food, food, industry recruiter, food industry recruiter food industry recruiter.com mario i did you hey, screw up your sound again it's not as good as it's yeah, been yeah, yeah. Wait, wait 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 i'm, I'm trying to fix it again i'll have to wait for ivan to show up again okay uh here's an important question and you know what they always complain when i talk about grooming in the recruiting groups too this comes from the wall street journal it's not a radical paper okay here's the uh here it, 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 our crop tops good for an interview. It says lots of people, these young people are coming to the office for the first time after, you know, they've been off for the pandemic and they're wearing crop tops. 
you know, and, and uh, so there's a question, is that good? Is it suitable? And there's no stopping it is it was sort of the my takeaway from it. If you have a candidate, is it OK if she wears a crop top to an interview? Gavin, you first. Hey, man, I'm just going to say one thing. Bloody lucky that it's warm enough that they can walk around like that, because around here, you wouldn't be walking around in a crop top. That's for you sure. Know, they work inside. Exactly. That's the point, Gavin. Hopefully they've got they heat. Although up in there. Europe, Ooh. you might not have it very, very long. I don't know. Right. With the war. Uh, crop tops are, are big here also. Um, yeah, it depends on the job. If you're going to try and uh, apply for a, a high level job, maybe that's not the best way to dress. Okay. What if you don't have an athletic body? Is that a factor? Oh. <laughs> don't answer. <laughs> don't answer. No, Ernie, let's not go down that far. Crop tops. Crop tops. Okay. Ernie, crop tops. Nah, no. Would you tell somebody if, if would your client come back to you and say, Ernie, I mean, I didn't want to see her navel. Okay. Uh, what would you say? Oh, you just sort of, you got to coach them at first. I mean, no, but, well, well, what are you going to say? Do you actually say, hey, hey, hey ma'am. No crop top at my interview, okay? No, I, I don't know. I don't know if you'd go out that far, but just you got to tell them that they need uh, to dress professionally. You go do take. You do. You do make a point of saying that. Yeah, you got to tell them. You know, sometimes, sometimes you got to be their their mother or father. You got to be their parent. Tell them, you know, and they because okay. they'll come back and they'll say you got one. You got one shot. Make it look good. Okay, you know, uh, cool. Gavin, are you with them on that? Do you, do you tell people what they should wear? Do you warn them? Hey, I'm hey, this is most professional. Of my, most of my interviews are, are by phone. Okay. So yeah. uh, there isn't there isn't that much of, of, of an issue when it comes hey, to, to okay. clothing. I would okay. say less than 5% of all interviews that I've done in the last, what, 10 years or 15 years have been face-to-face. -face. And 99% of your candidates are men. Is that fair? No. Oh, really? They okay. All, yeah. They all wear derbies. No, I'm, I'm surprised. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Mary of the Recruiter.com. Crop tops, okay. Turn on your microphone. Yeah, okay. He doesn't want to answer. Okay. Yeah, if she's hot in it, I agree with you. It'll be good, oh, but it's not gonna I get the job. You know, he's from <laughs> a part of the world where they, they don't have the same kind of uh cautions as we do. David and Mar, I almost forgot about you because I can't see you. Crop top, is it okay? No, I would say you got to dress professional. Would you yeah. blow, uh, if someone Don't came in, to, if someone came in with a good, wait a second, with a good um, resume and they had the skills you wanted and she was wearing a crop top, would you knock her out? Not necessarily, but I would, I would coach somebody in advance, like Ernie said. Give, so you, you actually tell more. people in advance, well, here's something else. Virgin Airlines claims that uh, their applications doubled since they've changed their grooming rules and uh, men can wear skirts, women can wear pants and people in the uh, cabin crew, they don't have to wear makeup anymore. And uh, right. tattoos, tattoos are okay. But the thing that got the news was men can wear skirts. Does anybody want to comment on Yeah, on uh, yeah. How, how about ruining flying for the rest of us? Okay. <laughs> That's not what I was talking about. <laughs> the last thing we want to see when we're sitting in a freaking business class seat is to see a man walk around in a skirt. Hold on a second. In, in South skirt. Asia, well, don't, in South hey, Asia, hey, don't listen, men wear those uh, those wraparounds? They wear sarangs, okay? But we do, it's not the skirt. There's a big difference. No, there All isn't. Right? <laughs> no, there isn't. And I don't, I, just, see, I, don't, I don't like that myself, okay? I, prefer, I don't mind wearing a kilt. That's cool, but I'm not Scottish. Virgin, so Virgin's trying to recruit more Scots. That's why they uh, opened yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. David's on point. Okay, am I am I finished with grooming? Uh, uh, grooming. Nobody wants to talk about that anymore. Okay. Um, no. No, no. Okay. Grooming matters. It always matters. Have you Does seen anybody the two want to talk about job ads, or should I pass over that yet? for now? Animal. What? Have you seen this? Sasha and Travis are down there. No, are they there? Yeah, well, there. I can see them. But they don't uh, to, that's to up to them anything. whether they want to come on and show themselves or say something. Yeah. Travis, you're welcome to to butt in. Travis Yeager, Y E A G E R. He's an IT recruiter in Indiana, willing to work any territory in the United States of America. Okay, America. Okay. Uh, America. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Our good friend, Tom Chuna, I'll talk about him even though he's not here. He was approached this week twice by people he pre he screened a year ago 
He set them up with his hiring managers, two people, and they ghosted. They didn't show. They were no show, no warning. Now, a year later, they're asking him to uh, go back into the hiring process. Uh, he said no. Gavin, was he right? No forgiveness. No forgiveness. No, that's, uh, Gavin can't make up his mind. Why are you so forgiving? Why are you a nice guy? Because it, for me, it will very much depend on circumstances and on the person. If, you, if you've got somebody, you don't know what happened with these people. Um, you don't know what the circumstances were. And, and I've, I've, I've experienced situations um, where there was afterwards a good excuse. There was no good excuse for not saying anything, but there was an explanation behind it. And if that, if that person can really bring added value to your client, you owe it to your client. Okay. Hold on a second. Your grandmother died for the third time. At least tell me a month later when the funerals happen and your grieving is finished. But they didn't, right? Yeah. Ernie, yep. Ernie's a little Still, more I'll mature. Be than you. Ernie's, got, Ernie's a little older than you, and I think he's got a bit more wisdom. Am I right? You're right. I have more wisdom. <laughs> hey, Ernie's a godfather. So what's no your opinion, Ernie? Are you going to let these guys walk all over you again? Not like Gavin. No, uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I, I think I think in the whole thing, you know, like if they don't show up, it's it's one thing. But the whole thing is communication. Did you tell me? Did you did you get back to me? Did you communicate? And if you didn't, and I don't care if your mother died, your father died, anything, you know, you got to tell you got to tell me. And if you don't do that, then I don't want to deal with you. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to talk about it? Mario, the recruiter, Travis Yeager, uh, David M. Marr, Sasha, whoever, I, anybody? I so, totally agree with uh, Ernie's point. Sorry, brother David. No problem. They need to communicate. Let anyone go. Let the world end for like, yeah. Give me and a then, call and tell me the world's ending. And, and if he comes back to you a year later, you'll remember. Bugger off. Simple as well. <laughs> Simple as hell. Woo! I don't give a shit. David I've done Mark. that multiple times. David so, and uh, Mark. Okay. So I'm answer this he, he question two to... ways. Um, so when I was in an agency, if somebody ghosted or didn't was a no call, no show, um, and they didn't communicate, there was someone that I wouldn't work with again because your reputation's on the line. And the agents yeah, on the yeah. corporate side, it's more forgiving. So I would say that you know if somebody had a legitimate reason uh, and they came back and they were able to articulate that to me. I would I would give them a second chance, but if they can't articulate and they feel like they're blowing smoke up my ass, then then uh, you know then I would say no. But if, but if if the first time around they were to show up for an interview and they didn't show up and you didn't hear from them for about a year, would you forgive them? <laughs> On the corporate side, yes. On the agency. He's like, no, because it was, your reputation's on the line. Okay, well, you know what? In the corporate side, your reputation's on the line as well. Your hiring manager's going to say, this Dave is a sucker. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he, lets, he lets applicants or whatever walk all over him. I have to use some judge, more judgment. I can't trust most, David, most the, okay? Most, most of the people that I am working with are not, they're passive. They're not actually in the job market applying the jobs. Mm -hmm. They're exploring new opportunities. Uh, or trying to be passive, you know, exploring the waters, if you will. So so they've got a right to abuse you because you're kind of begging them to take a look at this job. Is that what you're saying, no, Dave? I'm not begging, first of all. I don't Yes, beg. you are. Okay. Don't beg. Yes, you are. Let me <laughs> let me second. move on to I'm not finished with this. Okay. There's a guy named Mark. He told Tom, he says, just this week, I violated that rule about no forgiveness for people who ghost you and don't get back to you. He said, I let three people who did this to me come back. I rescheduled all three. And guess how many showed up? Does anybody want to guess? None. None. Zero. Zero. Okay. Fun. Zero. Anybody else want to talk about that anymore? I think we delivered that message. We got the the nice guys. I, uh, David I, MR and... I think it's quite important on this one is that it, it very much depends also how you look at your market because me placing freelancers, these guys are going to circle back into the market over and over and over again in, in, in a much shorter period of time. And if I say, <laughs> hey, Ali. They are they are bad. Hi. Then I've got a I'm going to have a, a very much uh, 
I'm going to be on the losing end of that. So I want to be very careful about how I approach uh, these people. Okay, hold on a second. Gavin has a, a very, I'm going to bring in one of his wisdom uh, sayings, okay? He says, you should have a niche that's a little segment of the market, and it should be small, maximum 500 people, so that you can get uh, to know a lot of those people on a, a regular basis. And also, he says, this is what uh, David Perry would call a force multiplier. Every call you make tells you more about that niche because the you know you're working in that same narrow field all the time so you keep gathering more and more information about this concentrated area but his point is always hey i become real buddies with my candidates i know them they trust me they give me all kinds of information if you're on such good terms with them how could that even happen in the first place with a guy like you are you going to say that it won't it would never happen with you anyway because you you guys they they have a relationship with you. Is that what you're going to say, Gavin? No, you're not. Correct. I've never been ghosted. Because? Because these people know me so well. I've never been ghosted. I've had a colleague who was ghosted by one guy. And this guy, it was the third time that his grandmother died. Like you just said, funnily enough, that was true. But I personally have never been ghosted. Okay. Ellie Cohen, uh, she's <laughs> looking for a job. Uh, give yourself a job. Do you have a, a website, domain name, get Ellie? LinkedIn, get, get Ellie. Yeah. GetEllie.com? Get Is it GetEllie.com? No, LinkedIn, Ellie, E-L-L-Y, Cohen and Recruiter, and I will come up. You know what? Spend $25 or $20, whatever, and get HireEllie.com. And give it out on places like this where people can remember you, not Lincoln, something or other. This is good <laughs> advice, everybody. I'm not just scolding her, okay? I'm giving her free <laughs> advice. Get Ellie hired or hireellie.com. Who's going to ever forget that? I so disagree. And by the way, I'm a certified professional coach, been doing some career job search coaching since 2000. Get to the point. Get to why do you disagree? What's your point? It's horrible advice. Anything that takes from energy and time from what's going to get you to your target and horrible advice wait, to wait, find me. I'm looking for a job, but I'm not going to make it easy for you. Okay. Okay. That's and you are sounding desperate and screaming. And that's foolish. not how I want to come across. Let me tell you, you're foolish. This okay. Is usual animal. <laughs> huh? Oh, it is the animal the, show. Okay, yeah, I the forgot. usual animal show. Yeah, I'm just saying that, uh, no, I, I don't okay. think there's let's anything effective about Let's finish with your pitch. Let's finish with your pitch. Making a new flyer. Okay. And then, let's finish with, what kind of job are you looking for? Tell us. I'm a senior recruiter. I've worked in, uh, my target's kind of the corporate range of roles. Um, recruited for Splunk salespeople recruited for a company co-formed by Marriott range of corporate roles what do you want anything that falls into what I'm describing that is what I'm wanting corporate and recruiting I've position. A corporate I'm um, opened up uh what about no blanking contract RPO direct hire not agency that looks like okay her name is E-L-L-Y Cohen K-O oh sorry C-O-H-E-N Ellie yeah. Cohen, okay? Uh, don't Recruiter. go. You'll yeah, find yeah, me. Ellie with a Y. EllieCohen.com. Those are too easy, okay? Uh, anybody want to comment with me? And I'm the bad guy now, okay? She'll go all over the Facebook group and say I'm a mean, <laughs> nasty person. Who agrees with me and who agrees with her about that domain name? Anybody want to wager in? I don't think you need a domain name. You just need to get your name out there. Yeah, Ernie. I had to buy one for him, okay? Foodindustryrecruiter.com. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a genius, okay? But, but that's smart, okay? That's, that's smart. Okay, Anybody else want to comment? Okay. okay, you've got Ernie. I appreciate you've got that. A heavyweight. You've got Ernie on your side. Um, Gavin, with a guy I compliment all the time on his everythingaboutrecruitment.com. I remember his because he was smart enough to get a good domain name. Are you with me or Ellie on this? Oh, he doesn't want to say he's gutless. No, no, no. no. Give them I just, I find seven it, seconds. Every single candidate in the world had to go and create their own website. I think it'd just be too hectic. Keep in, in, in LinkedIn. It's one place. It's easier for us no. recruiters. No. Okay. Two. Anybody else want to comment? 
Anybody else? No, I think no guts. I think it can be advantageous to have your own domain name because, like for example, in technology, a lot of the engineers have their own websites, and I guess it's probably an extension of them doing their daily work. Okay. But it's necessary for a recruiter. It, I know yeah. some recruiters okay. that have it. Uh, you know but what? It, I think it helps get your I'm brand. I'm smarter up. than the average bear, I guess. Okay, not in everything, but certainly in this. Okay, uh, you I've know what? I'm for tech. Tech hold people. On, hold on a second. Be Before the show started, David M. Marr said he'd heard about this, this show for ages, but he couldn't find it. I said, "Well, why didn't you search recruiting animal on 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 Google?" Okay, you would have found it. He wasn't smart enough to do that. Now he's giving his advice about domain names. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, here's a sad story, okay, from a recruiter in Canada. She says, I work for myself and I specialize in the food manufacturing sector. An old client of mine moved out of that sector, out of earnings sector, and moved into sheet metal, okay? And he asked me to search for a quality assurance manager. I began to learn about this new industry. You know, it was a lot of work for her to learn something new. And she, I found a good candidate. He was ready to uh, make the offer. We wanted to get it approved by the head office. They decided that the rules should be based out of New York instead of Canada, out of their New York office. So now they're working with a recruiter in the US. She's, she's really upset and she wants to bill them for it. And she wanted to know, uh, number one, if she can bill them. And number two, if there should be something uh, in her contract. She's a contingent, obviously a contingent recruiter. Uh, Ellie, I see you're worked up about it. Do you want to comment? We'll let others comment. I commented on the thread. It was okay. a small thread. Eight okay. People and I have a comment. Anybody else want to comment? I didn't bother commenting on the thread. I saw it and I thought, beginner's mistake, stick to your niche. So what should she have said to her, her old client? Find somebody else? Yeah, of course. She spent so much time learning about something that she cannot use that information. Complete waste of time. To sheet metal. She doesn't want to stay in sheet metal. She said that, right? There you go. So there how would she put she... that? How would Guys, she wait question. a second? Wait, no, no, no. I want to for Gavin in one second. How would she say that to to the to the her old buddy? I do not want to be Basically, in sheet metal. <laughs> Sorry, Ernie. I do not want to be in sheet metal. Thank you. Well, Bye. yeah, but yeah, but what I would what I would say is quite simple. I'd say, look, I bring you value because I know one niche. If you're going to ask me to now go and and spread myself around, you're going to lose the whole value that I'm bringing to you. So See, no, that's, I'm that's, not going to work on that. But that's the point where you can ask for an engagement fee or whatever. Uh, and yeah. If, um, and, but really, you got to look at yourself and say, do I really want to do that? And if I'm not excited about doing it then I don't do it. So someone could throw you someone could throw you a job in your own niche. But if you're not excited about doing that job, don't do it. If it pays too little, if it's in the wrong location, whatever. But there are yeah, some jobs say, there are some jobs excited about that other niche, don't do it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If but if there's something that says, "Okay, I need a VP in LA. I'm I'm on it. Let me look at it." And you get excited about it, then do it. MaryLaRecruiter.com wanted to say something. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, it's in the manufacturing uh, niche and her niche is manufacturing or? No, her niche, niche is niche food to... manufacturing. This is sheet metal manufacturing. She's crazy to even attempt it. Simple as that. <laughs> what should she say to the her old, the guy hired a lot of people from her. Now he's moved somewhere okay. else. What should she say to him? He hired a lot of people from her. Good client. Now he has shifted. Thank you. Adios. Bye bye. Yeah. OK. Next question. She says, should I put something about this in my uh, contract? I don't know what you like. If yes. I work if I work my ass off on this search and at the last so, minute you decide to change the spec, uh, you I still would, have to pay me even if you don't hire from me. Is that is that what she's thinking? Is the contract what? contingent or is it a contingent? Contract? Then she can't ask for contract, shit. Right? So what I would have done if I was an agency still, I would have said that, you know, this is outside of my normal spectrum and I would have, I'd be willing to take it on, but do it like as a project where they're hiring you by the hour. That way mm -hmm. your time is still compensated. Flat fee or hourly yeah. or, yeah. Exactly. But even so, as Ernie said, that might just be taking her away from her real uh, money-making uh, activity, right? 
if she has so True. much business on her plate, then yeah, it would be it would be foolish to to focus on something outside of that. But if she's slow or like a lot of recruiters I know are, are trying to find business right now, okay, you that's another story. To come your way. Okay. No, but that's probably very relevant because things probably were slow. I mean, things are slow in certain markets. I don't know about food that. Wasn't manufacturing. part of this story, okay? No, no, no. But the point is, I mean, it's a factor. She was interested enough to do it. If she took a month to learn it, but if she said, I'm going to in three days devour everything I can, interview people, whatever, learn the niche, she took that chance. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you don't normally bill if it's contingent, unfortunately. You can't bill it. Come on, you're going to. We all know Any factors can change. Yeah, yeah, uh, enough. Okay, final final comment. Mary of the recruiter.com. <laughs> she she cannot bill it and she should have to, uh, yeah, she's, wrong. Just, she's wrong. She's wrong. She, she got taken. Simple Everybody that. agrees she was foolish. Okay, <laughs> what about this? Here's an IT recruiter I respect. I don't know if I discussed this one before. Uh, I won't mention her name. She seems to, she speaks in a way that I, I suspect she's a good recruiter. She's corporate. She says, I hate small talk so much you know uh i'm like hi how are you okay let's talk about interesting things now she says that works with technical people sales people make me want to jump off a bridge so many words just to say nothing okay so here she's saying two different things that small talk is a waste of time but with some candidates you have to do it is that is that right super rich isn't here and he advises talking about people's kids and also guy gavin is a small talker as well so we'll go go to you first what about what she said small talk sucks gavin uh, listening to you there's two things that spring spring to mind one work with people that you can relate to and get on with that's the first thing and number two small talk is all about the individual person so if you've got a community that talks more you're going to have more small talk. If you've got a community, for example, developers that talk less, you will have less of it. Adapt to your audience. Yeah, I don't understand what he said. Anybody else want to talk about that? Anybody or we can leave it. We can drop it and move on. It's an old topic animal. He answered it. Okay, I'm moving on. He answered okay. it. Okay, fine. Yeah, he didn't answer it. Okay. Uh, he he yes, he did. <laughs> Here's the thing. This guy said he's a corporate recruiter. He says everybody wants candidates uh, to meet with 10 people in their company. He might be exaggerating, but he means a lot. OK, and so he, you know, he immediately tells the hiring manager three tops, three tops. And the guy starts fighting with him. He said, look, would you want 10 interviews yourself? And that cuts the ground right out from under the hiring manager. OK, the answer is always no, he says. He's very blunt about it. Is that what you want? 10 interviews? It's absurd. Anybody else want to talk about that? Do they run into that when the, the, can, the hiring manager wants them to meet too many people? Is, it, is this guy a retained recruiter? Is he... No, he's on in the inside like David M. Marr. When you're, when you're in-house, I think part of your job is to be a talent, or a talent advisor. And if you have a hiring manager that is accustomed to doing things a certain way, that is not that is like a let's say a, a 10 step interview process that is ludicrous and it's you're not going to find candidates and you're wasting your time and their time and company time so basically i would i would advise them against that and i would structure uh, a an interview process that had probably two steps max that would get right to the point where they know who they need to hire okay you stated that very well would you be that blunt with the hiring manager this is ludicrous i'm a direct I'm a direct data-driven person. So I'll take a look at the what data. What does data-driven mean? I saw somebody else asking, sorry, I'm going to go. She said, no, 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 She said, I want to be a data-driven re recruiter. Please tell me how. And I said to myself, what is a data-driven recruiter? You data go ahead and tell me. Data-driven means you're, you're researching, you research things. You, you analyze the data that you have internally. So in corporate side, there's a lot of internal hiring metrics and things like that. And I could pull data and basically lay out the case to the hiring manager that, with this many steps in the process, you're going to lose a very, you're not going to be able to close candidates in the time that you want. And here, over here, they use these two step process. And these are the results they had before and after. And based upon that, if they don't decide, you know, wow, I mean, that's a lot of study. I mean, that is, you have to do a lot of research to come up with those it's figures. It's easier than you think. It's just, it's a matter of just looking at your corporate metrics, pulling down your ATS data, interview data and putting it into a spreadsheet and just laying it out in a format that's easy for them to consume. 
Anybody else want to talk about being data driven? Is anybody else going to claim they're data driven here? I got a feeling some people are. Anybody? Mar no. Mario Pass? is. No. Yeah, to a level. <laughs> I do depend on data, but not. No, I in was every thinking sense. it would be Gavin would say he's data driven. Okay, but or uh, going back to the ten steps, there's things to be said about that. <clears throat> Oh, That's you want long. you want 10 interviews? Is that what you're saying, Ellie? You want no, me to start I'm, yelling at you again? Is that what you're looking for? Don't be, don't be yelling at me. I know. I like this didn't. show. I like to tell people they're wrong. I okay. Know, you didn't yell at David Marr, though. I was like, oh. David Marr said something reasonable. Guys. I yelled at him before. He didn't, you know, he didn't know he didn't know yeah. how to find the recruiting animal show. It's insane, okay? <laughs> no, we, don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't know if David is there's so many times. Because it was more like a podcast or something. Hold on. Before. She wants to explain why a 10, 10 step interview is a program. Is 10 good. steps are crazy, steps Ellie, on never any account. Acceptable. Um, but I did just talk to someone who had nine, and I'm going to dig into like why and probably coach her. Yeah. But okay. uh, no, I mean, I worked for a name brand company and they had five, six steps and a test. Yeah. But I think if you set, and I think that's pushing it. But I think if you set expectations up front, but you also absolutely have to influence the manager. I mean, if it weren't for it being that company, you know, and it being planned You know, out, this fits into the category. If you don't have any work on your desk and you're enough, desperate, you'll go with a, a, a company that has that. Normally I'd say interviews. four or five. Well, well, MarioTheRecruiter.com. MarioTheRecruiter.com, please. Ellie, please sorry. Answer. I have a question. What kind of role was it for the to interview for 10 steps? I don't know. He says he said they all want it all the time. That's what he was saying. The freaking mental. That's not a company to ever work for. <laughs> but I think you're, you're right, Mario. You have to ask. We don't ask enough when people throw out scenarios. What's no. the role? What's the level? I mean, yeah, yeah I can understand if it's a role that CEO. builds the company. Yeah, CEO. Okay, we're finished with this. It's okay, we all got the point. We all got the point. I want to move now to one of Gavin's uh, acts of genius. Okay, I, I uh, this is a show where I'm complimenting him. Okay, <laughs> and, and actually, facial expression. <laughs> this is this is one of the this things. This is why he keeps on coming onto the animal show. <laughs> Gavin, you need to change your name to Gavin the Genius. Okay, this is, this is one of the things that, you know, when they say content marketing uh, allows you to demonstrate to your market that uh, that you know something and you're worthwhile dealing with, I, I think he's done, I don't know if he's getting anything from these groups, but I think he's doing that well. Here's what he says. He says, ask your client how they're going to measure your work. I, I'd never heard of that before. He says, few recruiters, not many recruiters, ask the hiring manager right from the start how they're going to measure the quality of the recruiter's work. Okay. You want to talk about that, Gavin, or should I do a little more reading? Do you want or should to want he yell to... at you? Do you want to talk about it? Everything about recruitment.com? Isn't it self-explanatory? I've never done it. Anybody else say, how are you going to measure if I'm successful? If they make a hire, that's the obvious thing. Yeah. Yeah, but there's much more to it. And it, it's, it's on an individual hiring manager basis because everybody sees things in different lights and has different yeah, priorities. Can... Obviously, you want the right person in there, but it's the whole process that needs to be looked at. I don't know. Gavin, I totally it. I, know, I built I know, him I know, up and now he's ruining it. Okay. I don't even know. Gavin is on point. I agree with his point. Yeah, it depends well, on the. What was his point? I don't know what his point was. On what is what is successful? Simple as that. I want to it see ten people. I want you to bring no. me ten good people. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. What is but, your but, I know, Look at it this way: like? you might say I want to have ten resumes, and another hiring manager will say I only want three. You're going to say to the person who wants ten, "Why do you want the 10? Why is this important for you? You're going to understand. And then you're going to explain to them that it's not going to happen. Yeah, but obviously. at least you understand what's going on in their, in their minds because at the end of the day, they are your biggest marketing machine. You want them to be happy with the service you're offering, yeah. specifically them. Okay. And that's but, why you've but got as all even David M. Marr said, you have to tell them. You have manager. to tell them what service they're going to get. Now, when the thing you just said is you're 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 drawing out their uh, expectations, but really only so you can shoot them down. Okay, am I right about that? If it's necessary, yes. Okay. <laughs> that's devil's advocate. You know, you know the kind of the crazy part about this whole hiring stuff is they tell you what they want, right? <laughs> Hiring manager, this is what I want. I want A, B, C, and D. You find them a person that has 
everything they have, the ideal candidate. And that's the first one you send them. And then the, and then the manager says, I need to see two more people. Why the hell do you need to see two more people? It's what you want. It was the crucial question. The crucial question being, so if I find this person, will you move forward? Yeah, but I mean, they, even, even so, they will say, yeah, yeah, sure. And then they'll turn around and say, but I need two more people. But I, well, my, my point is, why do they need two more people? Because they've been taught that. And so, yes, you're right. You need to come back with, let's get clear on what you're looking for you know, yeah. in whatever words you're using. And if we find them, you know, you need to be ready to move forward because yeah, we're going to lose this person if I find two more. Yeah. But, you know, but I think for the most part, a lot of times they're not, even though they told you what they want, they're not certain of what they want. They're not confident in what they want. Well, that's yeah. exactly so it. it. It's a lack of confidence. Through again, what is this person going to be doing and what do they need? And they you know, need to, I, I don't they, really they, believe that I know very much about recruiting, but when I hear what other people say, I, I, I do. Okay. Ernie's 100% right. Uh, the thing is, you bring in somebody that's good and they oh, I want to see two more people. Buzz off. Okay. I'm lucky I found this guy for you. Uh, uh, the question is how to deliver it to them. And with Gavin, is look, you have to ask them up front if I bring you the right person uh, right off the bat, are you going to be ready to move forward? And if if the but then if they say they tell you in advance no I want to see three people do you kick them out right then and what words do you use to say I'm not working with you uh, if you're you, going to you be ridiculous them. you use those closing always be closing ABC you have structured questions that capture data that then you can use to help guide the conversation and help them get to the ideal best practice based upon your industry I don't know what you're talking about I don't understand a word you said okay. Let's go to Ernie since he was saying <laughs> one person, one okay. person. Okay. Food, one, one, you bring in one good person. They says, Ernie, I want to see two more people. What are you going to say to him? The exact words. I want to know. You, isn't this what you wanted? Tell me what this guy doesn't have. You know, tell me what this guy doesn't have. It's exactly what you wanted. So were you lying to me? <laughs> you know, I mean, shit, this is it. This is a guy. So let's get let's do this. Let's get him in there. Let you interview him. You talk to him. Spit him around. Have him talk to whoever he's going to talk to, and then you tell me. In the meantime, I'll be looking for somebody, but bring him in for an interview. There's oh, no, 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 no. You're you're changing your story. You've already sent the guy in. He it's, loves him, it, but then he tells you to go find two more people, just like that. Excuse me, but do I look to find two more people? I don't know. I want to get feedback on this guy. Because in the process of looking for two more people, we already got have... the feedback. He's a good candidate. Okay, you're changing the story. No, no, Anybody no, no, else no, no, want to no, talk I, about I'm, it I'm anymore? Giving, I'm, I'm giving, you, it. giving you reality. Oh, Ellie, you, Ellie, you get... don't give Ellie a chance. Okay, go ahead. Well, but, but be, what, oh, I sorry, amplify Ellie. what Ernie said. He's succinct. Go ahead. I amplify what Ernie said. And I've been in this exact situation. <clears throat> when I sent someone who was a gem and they all met that person and said, we love them. And can you send more? And I said, I need to understand what it is you are not seeing in her experience because she has all the criteria that we discuss. So please let me know what you would be looking for that she does not have. And they were quiet for two days. And then they came back and said, the whole team discussed this and we agree she's astonishing and we want to move forward with an offer. The other thing that hasn't been mentioned that could be coming into play is sometimes companies have diversity hiring initiatives. Like if you do with business with the federal government in the US and you're like a government contractor, well, you have bring to bring have... in some other factors. I'm going to tell you what just came to mind for me, okay? You know, uh, when people talk David, about... he doesn't want to hear anything else. That's Mario? fine. Okay, hold on. When people, talk about... <laughs> when people talk about uh, porn addiction, they say what's happening is that serotonin, the porn, porn uh, generates serotonin, which always yeah, uh, initiates your desire, no, your desire to see new things. And, and so if you bring in a good candidate, that's like good porno. And they want to see more. It's you, you never get satisfied. So, I'm not so kidding. This, so animal, there's a new name, a new uh, genre of porno. 
candidate porn. Recru- yeah, okay. candidate what? porn. What? You're right. What? Exactly. So, uh, I'm going to start yeah. a group called Recruiting Porn. Okay. Okay. So, so, I, I, I don't want to where we bring up. Wait, is wait that a second. The recruitment industry is a subdivision of the porn industry. No, <laughs> but the same. But hold on. Hey, the same, same thing, Gavin. Psychology is happening there. You see something yeah, good, you, you, you want more, even though you don't need more. Okay, so so animal, what you do is then you send them to other candidates that you know aren't equally as qualified. There you go. You they're two not as se- they're not as sexy. Okay, certainly that's what I would do as well. <laughs> or, or if you or if, or if you know them well enough, you know they're going to do that. Then you send in the two the two that aren't as qualified. Then the would anybody you walk away from a company after or or you know it might be different if you're corporate, but would what why if they're insisting on go get more and you know this is a really great uh hire uh would anybody walk away from them well first of all i would say this am i the only recruiter and if i'm not the only recruiter you have my one candidate have your other people have any, have the other recruiters and what if you are the only recruiter then you need to be not as foolish or not stupid enough to realize that you are if you're doing contingent you should know there are other people. Yeah, would I you walk yeah. away? Yeah. Would you walk away from the search? That's what I think you should walk away. If you bring a good person, they say, I, I'm not ready well, to hire. I want to see don't, more. You don't, offic- you don't officially walk away. You probably don't okay. work it as well. You hard. know what? I don't. Well, okay. I'm not. Uh, I'm either working the search. I'm not no, going to make you think that then, I am then, not. Then I am, know, oh, yeah. You I'm you on your what, search and no, I'm not. No, it's not doing anything. The, and you don't know what you're doing because. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. I tell you all the time. I'm a mediocre recruiter. Okay. I just have to disagree with after i tell you how smart they are they try to prove that they're not okay sorry <laughs> so, so you should have 10 other searches that you're working anyway yeah okay well, so, well final question on that you know our friend imi always puts her uh managers in pl- in their place i like that so i wonder what she would say yeah I- i'm willing to put into this her classic statement and the 10 rules of recruiting i'll put into this what you put into it right and so I wonder if she would say, look, I found you the right guy. Yeah, just like I'll do, I'll pull an Ernie. Uh, uh, I'll work on somebody, other hiring manager search. I think that's what she might say. Anybody else want to talk about this before we move on to something new? I would say that also you need to make sure that you're, that you, if they have an unrealistic expectation that you're bringing them down to reality. Some people, for example, that work in small companies have a horrible reputation. They're like a C player and they want to hire A players. You have to let them set the expectation and say, listen, you're not an A company. You're a B company or whatever letter, and you're not going to attract top talent. You're going to have to settle for the C squad that, the best that, you're going to be able to afford. That's beautiful, David. And you better you should... drop drop the truth, give them the reality. Here's the data behind it. You don't agree with me? Look at your Glassdoor reviews. Look at your Vault.com reviews. Look at your Indeed reviews. Your Whoa. company sucks. Dave, Dave, are you saying she's out of your league? <laughs> No, I'm saying that I would bring them down to reality and I would work. I would use data to make my point and I would be professional, but direct. Okay. In my other words, consultants not you, sound mad. you sound mad right now, though. Yeah, he is mad. He says, you're lucky Curious. to get this candidate. Okay. He's you're lucky, you dope. Okay. That's what he's saying. <laughs> Does anybody have an issue that they want to discuss? I, I, wide open. Mario, is there something you want to talk about? There's something burning that's been going on in your recruiting business that you- Whiteboarding. Have- he wants to talk about whiteboarding. Okay, well, that's what you're doing to these hiring managers. They need it. <laughs> look behind his. Look behind him. He's got one. He can talk oh, about it. Okay. Yeah, Put yeah, it around yeah. in your chair and whiteboard for us. Draw okay. picture. <laughs> Anybody want got a topic? Nothing look, much, I'm right? wide open. I'm I'm even for the disembodied people who are here. Okay, fine. Let, 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 me, let me ask you: How's the recruiting uh, game going on nowadays? Any slowdowns? I mean, ask a real question. I mean, how's the Not business going vague. nowadays? You know there's a recession coming. People are whining. They I laid off 13% the of the workforce. Facebook, oh, screw the layoffs. Face, that's normal. Uh. No, it isn't. That size. That's normal. It's, it's uh, every me, economic me, cycle it happens. Okay, let me let me bring up something. That one that one um, comment about the person that wrote, she feels really bad because she had hired all these, brought these people to the <laughs> You company. should set that up. Yeah, this recruiter posted on Twitter that she feels uh, sick to her stomach because when she was at Twitter, she brought in all those people. Now they're caught up in, in the mess. And Ernie posted something and she, 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 I think she commented back to you. Someone went and snitched that they were talking about her. She wasn't a member of the group. Ernie, what did you say? Go ahead. I don't, I don't remember. I just know that if you're working in that, if you're working in that environment, she went out 
and she got her own job and you feel bad, you know, if you're in the recruitment, if you're in, if you're in corporate, you accept any corporate, you're going to lay off people, you're going to hire people, you're going to do all that. So get over it. And, and you know, and I, I think I, I look at people and they, I think they want to make it about themselves. You know, I've had people when I was in a VP of HR, I had my hiring manager sit next to me and the person got laid off or got fired and the hiring manager starts crying. After that's all over, I get her and I tell the hiring manager, you know what? What the hell is wrong with you? It's not about you. <laughs> you know that person just lost their job. You still got a you still got a good title. You're still working. They were crying for themselves, Ernie. Oh my gosh. No, but I mean, do, 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 do you the, think the, person, the hiring the, manager was crying for themselves because the person got listen, like, let listen, go? Listen, Ellie. She was crying. The person that was getting fired was comforting her. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Talk about a shit storm. This, that, and, this, that's a shit storm in the making. And and then you just say, how how can you make it about yourself? I'm sorry that I'm letting you go. That's so narcissistic. I swear to God, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, what the hell's wrong? We should be taking care of that person. That person has no job right now. And, and that should. And I don't know. I didn't see the conversation. So hopefully that person did turn around and say that, and we're getting an edit of saying, "No, no it's, it's, it's about you." And let's see how I can help you. And she didn't. She you know. didn't do that. She just kept crying. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> but that person who posted that, can I understand someone who's hired a bunch of people? that were let go okay, and but, feel but I, sad. Yes, but, but I've I, been in that no. situation. But I guess my, my point is this. It's one thing when they're all let go. The second stage is when you have to tell them. You're the person saying, I'm letting you go. And the, and the upper stage is when you have to decide who goes. And I've been in all of those three situations. Okay, the let me bring some focus here. I think the question is, for a recruiter, if you get, you bring someone into a company and, and it turns out the company goes south or something terrible happens, uh, even if the manager leaves, they, oh, you know what? I love this manager. You're going to love working with uh, her. And as soon as the candidate comes in, the manager takes a new job, goes somewhere else. So something really negative happens after you place somebody. Uh, I hear Ernie saying, look, that's life, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, does anybody have a, an opinion about their reaction, what they would do in can, that? Can we ask, can we ask Sensitive Rich as to what he would say? <laughs> yeah, this should be good. <laughs> listen, uh, uh, Sensitive Ernie, I mean, listen, you just said it, it's business, you know? You, 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 don't, you, don't, you, you can't control what's gonna happen. I didn't, be, and by the way, I missed the very beginning of this conversation, so. But listen, all you can do is what you do. You can't control these, Okay, the, so the, you the, go ahead or go well, ahead. The part B to my thoughts are aside from feeling for those people, if you brought them in, you felt a real connection and pulled for them as they're. But some of those folks, on the other hand, they've been there two, three years. They have fang histories. They have the perfect history that hiring managers want no more than three jobs in 10 years, blah, blah, blah. And they're going to do fine. They're going to get huge attention and all these folks are rallying to support them, but we have a whole bunch of other people who've worked for non-brand people, don't have those histories, and there isn't the visibility and pulling for those. So that's It's for the Twitter, critique. Rich. Anybody else want to talk about that? Gavin is quiet lately. Uh, you know, you want have anything to say about feeling bad? Have you ever placed somebody in a company where it didn't work out? I mean, you're with contract people, so it's different, right? They can just yeah, move to I'm another tell contract. people that the, that the assignment's not being extended of course, on a regular basis, you know? So, yeah. Well, hold on a second. Oh, well, hold on. You mean, uh, you said, okay, you got six months there or 30 days and it turns out to be 10 days or what are you talking no, about? No, no, but at a time of extension, typically the, the, it's three months rolling contracts. Uh -huh. So you might have a contract, a project that okay. lasts. And yeah, but they know that it might not months, work out from the start. Contracts. There was no rug pulled out from under them in that situation. But no, but you're still putting somebody out that has to go go find yeah. a new job. Yeah. I mean, the bottom line, it stinks, but that's that's life. I mean, no one can control yeah. what's going to happen. I mean, everyone's the adult decision. These are the Darwinians on this side, on that side of brain. the screen. They're they're Darwinian guys. Who cares, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it sucks, but it's happened to all of us. We've all placed people at, you know, the company changed or didn't work, or someone left. I mean, I mean, how many times you someone going to work for a friend and then their friend leaves two months later? I mean, it happens all the time. 
then the boss from hell comes in. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There you go. You know, but I mean, it, it's uh, when or it you, doesn't work out with the friend. There, there is never a guarantee in a job. And what you really got to do is focus to the future. And you got to tell somebody there's a reason why this happened. But if you go into a job thinking, I'm in here forever, then you might as well work for the government. Yeah. Because, you know, don't stay out of stay out of the corporate world because that's the name of the game. It's like you go to work for the NFL, you play for the NFL, and you think, you know what, I'm going to be here. I'm a professional athlete. I'm going to be here the rest of my life. No, bullshit. You be there. You're, this is why I like startups. Your startups, you're, you know, you should be more than a number. You're at a company. You're a number. You're at a big company with 5,000 employees. Like, I, I you know, I, I my neighbors are run some big company. I know more people at his company than he does. You know, I mean, it's just it's just the reality. But you also know that there's a, there's a risk with startups, right? There's a risk to everything. Yeah, there's right. always a risk. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, here's a follow-up it was question. All layoffs and startups do layoffs. It would it would help if you've got a bit of a socio sociopathic uh, kind of mentality if you're a recruiter. No, seriously, you, you don't you feel bad. I mean, you don't feel guilty, right? If something happens. It's just like Ernie and and. Uh, and Rich, they're super, they're real Americans. That's business, okay? I, I just, <laughs> no, I think, I, it's not about you. Yes, it's, we're it's sensitive, not about you're you sensitive. Individual person. It's about your role in any case. Yeah. So you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't feel personally guilty. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, what, I, just, I just think there's room, a, a little room for empathy along having, uh, in addition to having that perspective that but there may you don't be, have more but, but anyway, but would you, I mean, I agree with the you, candidate, that, but why would the candidate still going on about crying and stuff, right? That's a <laughs> bit of a different level of yeah. empathy, I, I, you know? And I mean, why, how can a candidate, I mean, you listen, no one wants it to happen, all right? So right. there's empathy, but reality is no one can, no one should be mad at you or I or any recruiter. Like I always use the example, it's like being mad at the priest when you get divorced. I'm like, mm -hmm. brought you together. That's all we did. We didn't set anything up. We didn't put anything in place. We made an introduction. Everyone used <laughs> adult uh, intelligence to and make the, decision. The, the down and dirty of it is, if that didn't happen, we wouldn't have a job. Bingo. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, again, and, maybe, and maybe a part of it, again, if you're especially if you're talking about working at a major brand two, three years, it may just be knowing individuals and their dreams, like they were finally about to be made a manager. You know, it's the stories that you may feel for that now that person, yeah. and uh, that's all I'm saying, there's space for feelings, but knowing- Moving yeah. on to the last question. So the show's almost over. We're beating this one to death. Okay. What about, what about this section? I'm gonna call it tone on the phone. You know, there's a, I've I've got a I've got a long uh, quote from Rich. I'll save that for another time, okay? But there's a shorter one that Rich actually uh, liked. He liked it. Cold callers have to watch their tone of voice. You cannot sound really nice. You're there to do business, so don't yeah. sound like a puppy dog or <laughs> super friendly, okay? They won't take you seriously if if you're. Uh, Downward tone. Lick their face, okay? Rich, over to you first. Yeah, you, you want to have downward tones. If you're always talking with the big uptone, like, oh, I'm so excited someone's actually talking to me, no one's going to take you serious. Okay, actually, I have, to, I have to quote Rich here. I said I wouldn't. <laughs> Rich says, the key to successful cold calling is the energy and excitement in your voice. He's contradicting himself right now. He well, said, no, yes. I'm not. Wait, <laughs> I, Rich, I have a question. Rich, hang on, I have hang a question. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You could be excited without sounding like a cheerleader. You could be like, I just, yeah. like, now I've been starting to make a lot of videos. And you know what? <laughs> and, not what and he said. The, not the, what the videos, you know, you're, you're excited, you're talking fast, you're loud. You know, it's, it, you know, but you're talking in a tone where, you know, it commands a little respect instead of being like, oh, my God, this guy's fantastic. You know, <laughs> <laughs> no, now he's a valley girl. Mario, you want to ask Rich a question? Rich, uh, I, Rich, when you're doing a cold call, OK, mm -hmm. and you're leaving a voicemail, how do you sound on the voicemail? I sound just like it's super short. Hey, this is Rich we'll right. follow up on an email. That's it. OK. Just that, like that. All right. That's awesome. OK. OK, cool. Yeah. Cool. But that's the correct tone to use. I mean, hey, it's Rich. Give me a call back. Yeah, no, he's, what did he say? Uh, this Hi. is Rich. I left you. I sent you an email. Is following up on an email, you know. There are notes, Rich, going, hi, hi, this is Rich. Yeah, Rich, Rich, my biggest question was, how is the tonality on your uh, voicemail? Very cool, right? Chilled out. Yeah, it's, it's, you act like you've been there before. You act like you, you, you've done this. Expect to get it. It, 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 all, it all comes down to having confidence. 
Well, that's it. Because I mean, you, you know, I, you, I always take the attitude in the back of my mind that if I do my job right, I am making way more money than anyone I'm talking to on the phone. All right, which is yeah. generally true. And so why shouldn't I act confident? Even if I'm not confident, it doesn't matter. You have to act it, you know? Did, Rich, do you set up a website that says rich.com hire me <laughs> throw back to earlier oh, in the call okay. you know what he they never agree. i always expect rich to agree with me he never, never. does but uh, <laughs> this is what we had a big argument with at the beginning of the show she's looking for a job okay so she should go i told her she should go buy a domain get uh hire ellie or get ellie.com okay and, nice. and everyone Gee, disagreed you could, you'd never for you'd never forget it you mm -hmm. know uh well, you know point what? it to I, her linkedin I, profile I, okay I, I won't even disagree with you because I just talked to, um, who was it? Was it, um, I, it was a trainer. I was on the trainer I was talking to and they were telling this story where this guy would go and buy domains. Like if he was calling Joe Schmo, he would buy the domain, joeschmo.com. And then he would call the guy up and say, listen, this company really wants you and go check out like your name.com and like the whole job descriptions there and everything else. I love it. You know? I mean, it's super well, it depends what type it. of target recruiting. Yeah, is the goal. Yeah, but I I'm mean, about to have to go back to work for my own business if I can't find something thing. soon. Which, you should be excited to do that. You make more money. What's wrong with going back to your own business? Heck, I would die if I had to go back to a job Lots of people now. don't like because, it I mean, because yeah. I'm a great recruiter, but I have not figured out the BD. No, 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 Nobody he doesn't it. give a good answer. If you give a good answer, I will just I did not yell about that. it. You don't you don't yell at the dean. Dean's yeah, been on man. a few times, okay? Dean's been on <laughs> before that. and he asked me to come on. And I was telling David and Mar, uh, you know, I'm gonna show another side of Dean DeCosta. So we'll, you know, it's not gonna be like he's telling us from heaven how to do sourcing, okay? We'll ask for nitty-gritty stuff. And then we'll talk about recruiting because he calls people too. We want to see how he talks to people, not just super rich. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm going to introduce everybody because we're going to sign off. Super rich Ro Robson, raise your hand. Cornerstonesearch.com, number 11. His horse race is coming up in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Gavin, okay. I praise him to the skies. Okay. Everything about recruitment.com, raise your hand. Okay. Food industry recruiter, Barney Colors, purple. <laughs> .com. <laughs> Mario the Recruiter .com. Raise your hand. Ellie Cohen, C O H E N E L L Y is her first name. No domain name. Look up <laughs> Lincoln Ellie Cohen or some <laughs> kind of nonsense and you'll find her. Okay. She's looking for a recruiting job and she's been in the business for a long time. Our good friend David M. Marr, corporate recruiter. Uh, Travis, uh, I think, was here. Travis Yeager, Y E A G E R. He's an IT recruiter in Indiana looking for work as well. Was there anybody else? Was Sasha here? Sasha. Sasha. Sasha's quiet. Sasha. She's quiet today. Okay. Well, I guess yeah, she's yeah, sleepy. Yeah. Oh, why didn't you show yourself? <laughs> okay. Do you have Sasha, any we got used you. We need the testosterone balance. We're working yeah. 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 No, 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 We like the boys club. We like the boys club. <laughs> no, 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 no. Part of why I showed up, I've been watching the pictures for the last two weeks. I'm like, we need balance. There you go. Uh, okay. And okay. then Sasha, that's how I wound up talking about empathy. Yeah, the empathy. Just saying, empathy. Job representing here. Okay, there's no sorry. Emp empathy is the wrong word. I don't know why people have forgotten no, empathy the word for sympathy. The week. Sympathy. Yeah. sympathy. Okay, sympathy, sympathy is, is the, what they mean. Okay, Sasha, you got the final word. Is there something you want to say? Nothing. No. no. Okay, there, everybody. <laughs> Thanks very much. Say. Next week, being the Costa. Bye bye. <laughs>